Hey guys, welcome back to Planet Mithril, and today we are painting up the brave, stout defenders of the Shire, the Hobbit Militia. Now, Hobbits are really fun to paint, as there are only a few sculpts for each variant of Hobbit, but with different paints and different palettes, you can create a host of completely different models from the same four sculpts. And as we have done here in this video, we'll give you a quick little rundown of the other three Hobbits from the blister pack that we've painted in various other ways to create a real sense of uniqueness across your Hobbit army. I mean, at 500 points, you're still going to have a lot of Hobbits, so they need to be different and need to all have their own characters. As always, our model was mold line cleaned and trimmed of any flash. It is a metal model, so be sure you get rid of all that flash. Uh, we then affix to the slotter base with super glue. Once that was dry, we covered the base with fine modeling sand and then once that was dry again we undercoated with chaos black spray we're really excited to paint these models on the channel for you today as we're fitting the hobbits from the film it's going to be a careful balance of trying to create those really nice vibrant colors whilst also paying homage to the very earthy tones that they tend to use as well and uh, we feel we've got another really nice balance here and the showcase of the four hobbits at the end will show you how you can create some really nice variety of your whole hobbit army but without further ado please sit back relax and enjoy the video First, we're going to use Buckman's Glow and apply a base coat to the face, hands and hobbit feet. Now we're going to base coat the waistcoat with Death World Forest. Now we're going to base coat the undershirt, predominantly the sleeves on this model, with grey seer. You might want to apply this in a few thin down layers to get smooth, even finish across, as the grey seer doesn't necessarily cover properly in one coat over a black undercoat. Now we're going to use a mix of Thondia Brown and Dryad Bark and paint in the trousers. Now we're going to use a mix of XV88 and Dryad Bark and we're going to base coat the flower pot hat on his head. Whilst at the same time very carefully picking out the neckerchief with pure XV88 just to create a little bit of contrast. Now we're going to base coat the sword blade with lead belcher. Now, using Skaven Black Dinge, we're going to apply a very quick base coat to the satchel and the belt hanging down his waist. Finally, all the hair on the feet and the head, as well as the strapping around the sword, was base coated with dryer bark. Now we're going to use a mix of Bugman's Glow and Cadian Flesh Tone and just apply an interim layer just to strengthen the skin tone for the following wash stage. Apply this all over the face, hands and feet as we did with the original base coat. Once you've got a smooth finish to your skin base coats, apply a thin down wash of Rightland Flesh Shade just to apply some initial depth and shadow to all the facial and skin detail. When the wash is dry, we can use pure Cadian Flesh Tone and apply a layer to all the skin areas now, leaving the Reichland Flesh Shade wash showing in the deepest recesses around the mouth, nose, eyes, and between the fingers, ankle joints, and toes. Now 
Now we can use a mix of Cadian flesh tone and Kislev flesh and push these highlights a little bit further by focusing on more of the more pronounced areas of facial detail and separating out the fingers and tendons of the hands and feet a little bit more. Now we're going to increase the amount of kids left flesh in your mix to an approximate 50-50 split between that and the Cadian flesh tone for the final dot highlight over the most pronounced areas of skin and musculature over the model. Now we're going to use Abaddon Black and very carefully paint in the recesses of the eyes. followed by a few dots of Pallid Witch Flesh either side just to finish off the look of the eyes. And that's all the Pallid Witch Flesh we're getting in this video. Hooray! We're going to use a slightly diluted mix of Athonian Camo Shade and Lamia Medium and just apply a very light wash to the vest itself. And then sink into all the grooves but being careful not to let it pull. Once the wash is dry, we can use a mix of Death Wall Forest and Strachan Green and we're going to layer over now leaving the Athonian camo shade showing in the deepest recesses and towards areas like the neck, the curves of the arms and all the folds in all the material. Once you're happy with how your layering stage looks, we're going to start adding a nerdling green to the previous layer mix and highlighting up the waistcoat, focusing on areas of material which are more prominent towards any light source and further creating that transition between the shadow in the recesses and the uppermost folds of material. By the time you finish these layering stages, your nodling green concentration should be no more than 50%. For the final highlight stage, we're going to use pure nodling green and just focus this as a final edge highlight just to the very apexes and all the upper areas of all the folds and curves in the material. This just helps finish off that pastely green that we want for this particular Hobbit's waistcoat. We can use a mix of non-oil, thin down significantly with Lamia Medium and apply this almost as a glaze to the undershirt grey areas. We don't want the non-oil concentration to be too thick here as any pooling is going to really upset the look of the sleeves when we get to the layering and highlighting stages. At this point we can also give the blade a quick wash with pure non-oil, there's no need to thin this down though. Once the wash is dry and you're happy with how the shading looks, we're going to reapply Grey Sear as a layer, leaving the non-oil showing in the deepest recesses and very well defined folds in all the material along the arms. The model is your friend here and all the curves are very well defined, so it shouldn't be too difficult to work out where you need to put this to get a nice sense of definition between the darker and lighter areas of shirt. Now we're going to start adding white scar to our grey sear base paint and we'll start applying this as interim layers before we get to the final highlight stage. At every stage you can increase the amount of white scar in the mix and focus on keeping your highlights tighter and thinner than the previous stage to create a nice sense of movement across all the material.
and you're happy with how your interim layer and highlighting stages look, for the final highlight, we're going to apply pure white scar just to the upper areas and upper most prominent folds of all the material, as we did the waistcoat. Again, with all these stages, you want to keep your paints nice and thin and apply these in very controlled brush strokes. But the last thing we want to do is risk any patching or any clumping of the white paints, as they can be quite temperamental at times. But take your time, and the result will be a really nice, natural looking white shirt for our Hobbity Militia. At this stage now we're going to apply a wash with Acrax Earth Shade, thin down a little bit with Lamy Medium and we're going to give the trousers, all the hair, the strappings on the sword and the hat and neckerchief a wash. Just to get some initial definition in before we get to the next layering stages. Now we're going to layer up the trousers with a mix of Thondia Brown, Dry Up Bark and Scrag Brown leaving the Agrax Earth Shade showing in the deepest recesses to create a real nice sense of movement in his trouser legs as he's running across the fields of the Shire into battle. Now we're going to start adding some Deathclaw Brown in small increments to the original layer mix and as we have with the rest of the material on the model, just focus on pushing the highlights a little bit more towards the apexes of all the curves and folds just to create a nice natural sense of movement and a nice natural transition between the darker and lighter areas of these trousers. Keep adding deathcore brown in as many increments as you want until we get to the final highlight stage but when you're finished your mix should contain no more than 50% deathcore brown to the original Thundria Dryad Scrag Brown mix. Finally, we're going to add a small amount of a messy desert and just apply a fine edge highlight to all the curves and folds of the trousers. Now we're going to use a mix of XV88, Dry Up Bark and Talon Sand and we're going to layer over the flower pot hat on the hobbit head. We can follow the main body of the top of the hat uh, for the bulk of the layer, leaving a small rim of Agrax Earth Shade showing between the main body and the rim of the hat, just to create a nice initial sense of depth. Now we're going to layer over again with pure Talon sand, trying to be a little bit more precise and leave the previous layer mix showing in the deepest recesses along with the Agrax Earth Shade, just to create that nice sense of transition and definition across a hat which ultimately doesn't have an awful lot of definition on it. Now we're going to use Talon Sand mixed with a little bit of a shabby bone and start applying this as a little bit more of a targeted highlight around the brim and the main body of the hat itself just to finding any very vague folds that are in the hat, just to reinforce that sense of movement and material. For the final edge highlight, we're going to increase the amount of a shabby bone to an approximate 50-50 split with a talon sand, and just focus this on the very edges of the brim and the main body and folds of the main bulk of the hat. The neckerchief now can be highlighted quickly with a little bit of Zemezi Desert. So just complement well with all the natural colours we're using currently and not blend in too much with the XV88 base hat we've painted previously. Now 
and we're going to highlight all the hair over the hobbit's head and feet with Gawthor Brown. We're also going to apply a very fine highlight to the sword strapping with this at this stage. Once you're happy with how this looks, you can apply a glaze to all the hair and the sword strapping with Agrag Third Shade. This will just tie in the Gawthor to the base coat and make it blend that much better. Now we're going to use Dawnstone and very carefully apply a fine edge highlight to the satchel. Now, using Iron Breaker, we're going to apply a very fine edge highlight just to the edges of the sword blade. And our final finishing touch is going to be Rune Lord Brass, just in three very small targeted dots down the front of his waistcoat to pick out his bright shiny buttons. As always, our base was dry brushed in three stages, first using dryer bark for the initial earthy look, followed by Gawthor Brown over the top, and finally picked out with a very light dry brush of Pallid Witch Flesh. As you can see, we've gone a little bit more heavy on the clump foliage for our Hobbit, and we've neglected any dead leaves this time round. This is to try and better reflect the lush vibrancy and earthiness of the Shire that the Hobbit is charging through on way to battle. As you can see, this Hobbit has been painted slightly differently. The shirt has been layered up from a Bane Blade Brown Rhinox Hide mix to a Carrack Stone and Shabti Blown highlight. The apron has been painted the same as this previous Hobbit with some weathering powders, and the trousers have been layered up from Storm Vermin Thur. Our Axe Boy here looks very similar to our previous Hobbit, but again we've gone a little bit more prominent with the grey trousers, and we've tackled the jacket slightly differently to create a little bit of differentiation. He also has a Carrack Stone shirt which is layered up through its screaming skull for the final highlights. And our raincoat wearing hobbit here is a very vibrant blue which has started off with Macrag and a Dark Reaper mix, layered up by adding Teclis blue, finally adding Lotherm blue to a final edge highlight of pure Lotherm blue. And there we have it, a stout group of four hobbit militia ready to help defend the Shire against Sharky and the ruffians who want nothing but ruin for our brave hobbity folk.